JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for April the 13th. I am Harala Mospisuros, head of research here at JFD. And I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar continued trading higher against all but two of the other major currencies on Tuesday during the Asian session on Wednesday. It gained the most versus the Euro, the Japanese Yen and the Swiss franc, while it underperformed only against the Aussie and the Canadian dollar. Now, the strengthening of the US dollar suggests that financial markets may have continued trading in a risk-off manner yesterday and today in Asia, but the weakening of the safe havens Yen and franc, combined with the strengthening of the risk-linked Aussie and Looney, points otherwise. So, with that in mind, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment. Here we see that uh, major European and US indices traded slightly in the red, but today during the Asian session, the morale improved with Japan's, um, with both Japan's Nikkei and South Korea's KOSPI jumping nearly 2% each. Now, the darkening prospect of, uh, for peace in Ukraine and expectations over a very aggressive tightening path by the Fed may have been uh, the main reasons why most equities continue to, continue to lose ground. Yesterday, we got uh, the US CPIs with uh, both um, the headline and core metrics accelerating further. However, although the headline rate exceeded its forecast, the core one came uh, came in s somewhat shy of um, of its own projection. That's maybe why equities did not tumble much. In any case, the outcome helped the dollar, the US dollar, to uh, to stay on uh, in the driver's seat at least against uh, the majority of um, of its other major major peers. Now, as far as market expectations over the Fed's future course of action are concerned, the data did not uh, change much the picture, which is in line with the not uh, that large slide in uh, equities. According to the CME Fed Watch tool, the probability for a 50 basis points hike at the next FOMC gathering has risen slightly to 85.4% from 84.3%, but the chance for a triple hike in June has now fallen to 17.9% from 35.5%. Investors are more convinced that another double hike will be enough uh, in June. Now, as for our view, as long as data and Fed comments favor an aggressive tightening uh, faster than any other major central bank, the US dollar is likely to stay on, um, to stay on the front foot. As uh, for the equities, with the war in Ukraine still uh, raging uh, and hopes of an imminent resolution uh, vanishing, expectations over aggressive, uh, aggressive uh, rate hikes around the globe are likely to keep, uh, to keep uh, equities under, under pressure. Now, speaking about aggressive rate hikes overnight, the RBNZ lifted its official cash rate by 50 basis points, more than the 25 basis points consensus, surprising even us. The New, the New Zealand dollar um, instantly spiked higher, but it was quick to give back those gains and trade even lower. In our view, this was because the RBNZ said that it remained comfortable with the outlook for the official cash rate as outlined in February, and that the larger move was intended to provide more policy flexibility. In other words, they hiked by more now, but they could slow down later as they maintained their um, uh, later uh, rate path projections. That's not a more aggressive stance than February. They just moved uh, sooner so they can hold uh, 
uh, hold on whenever they judge appropriate in uh, in the future. With that, with, with that in mind, we would expect the QE to now underperform for a while against currencies, the central banks of which uh, reveal willingness to normalize faster than previously thought. Now, today, the central bank torch will be passed to the Bank of Canada. At their March gathering, official of, uh, officials of this bank uh, hiked rates by 25 basis points to 0.50%, adding that growth for the first quarter of 2022 seemed more solid than previously projected. Indeed, data since then have uh, proved them right, with the IV PMI searching to 74.2 uh, in March, and the unemployment rate sliding uh, from 5.5 to 5.3 in February and staying there in March. Inflation kept accelerate, accelerating, which uh, enhances uh, the view for more rate hikes by this bank in, uh, in the months to come. Actually, the consensus is for uh, officials to, to also deliver a double hike today, uh, similarly to the RBNZ, and this time uh, we agree. That said, a 50 basis points hike by itself is unlikely to provide a major boost uh, to the loony, as this appears to be already priced in. Officials will have to maintain an optimistic language, hinting that more uh, such increases may be on on the way uh, in order for the loony to strengthen notably. Now, in case we only get a 25 basis points lift off, investors will probably be disappointed and perhaps uh, push the loony lower. Now, as for today's events, uh, during um, excuse me during, during the European session, we already got the UK CPIs for March, with both the headline and core rates rising by more than expected, allowing uh, pound traders to maintain their bets over fast rate hikes by the Bank of England as well. Later in the day, besides the Bank of Canada decision, the only other release worth mentioning is Eurozone's industrial production for February, with the forecast pointing to a big, uh, to a large slowdown uh, from uh, January's uh, reading. Now, as uh, for tonight, during the Asian session, uh, the Asian session Thursday, we get Australia's employment report for March. The unemployment rate is forecast to have ticked down to 3.9% from 4%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has gained 40,000 jobs after adding 77.4,000 in February. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at uh, 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.